Um, what role then does parasites play into infections as well? So, typically when a bearded dragon comes in with parasites, so, you know, you've got your, your parasites are either going to be your coccidia uh, or your flagellates or your pinworms. Um, you know, and the, the different ways that they reproduce um, will sometimes, it, it affects in what, what we see. Um, the coccidia and the flagellates, they reproduce by invading the intestinal cells and then um, they actually break down the intestinal lining when they reproduce and burst out of a, a cell. So they actually cause an enteritis, so irritation of the intestinal lining. Um, and so they're, in, they're natural parasites, which we see. All those parasites are ones that are natural. We know coccidia um, and the flagellates, when the female, when she lays her eggs, she coats the egg in these parasites. And then when the the bearded dragon hatches, um, it's actually infected with the cysts of these parasites. And then it goes on. That's how they survive. They're a direct life cycle. Um, so, and then pinworms, we suspect they are um, passed on the same way. But preliminary studies I've been doing um, with the parasitology department at Sydney University, we couldn't determine that um, based on using some um, infertile examples, but um, these parasites are natural to them, um, and somewhat your pinworms, uh, they're actually they break down cellulose inside the um, intestinal system of the bearded dragons. We know that bearded dragons actually cannot digest plant matter so well, and they believe that pinworms because Bearded dragons, an adult, is going to be 80% of the diet. It's going to be um, plant matter. We believe that the pinworms actually aid in digestion. Um, so any time we see an overgrowth of these parasites, we can pretty much use it as a gauge to say, okay, the animal's stressed. It's immunosuppressed, immunosuppressed. And that's allowed because usually the reptile's immune system keeps these parasites under control. And what we see is, depending if there's overgrowth, it causes pain in there, um, so they'll want to eat less. Um, but also when it damages the intestinal lining, they can't absorb water as well, so we get dehydration. Um, and in some cases, we get animals that can't absorb water, so we see them with loose stools. And then in other cases, we see animals with so much pain that their intestines stop and they actually get impacted. And it builds up so you know and it's all because there's what we call a, a dysbiosis of the intestinal fauna the gut biome pretty much something which is a very much an advanced um advancing um science that we're starting to see so you know it's a natural these are natural parasites and the overgrowth of them is what causes the problem not the fact that they're there in the first place so when you see some veterinarians that are like adamant, like get rid of it, get rid of it, have nothing there, do you not agree with that then? No. Um, early stages of my veterinary career, um, and and it's just purely based on what the literature was out there and what some of the you know some of the the reptile old reptile vets what they kind of understood of it because we've come a long way um, in understanding. Um, it's not good for them. You see people going, going to the vet or constantly wanting to hit them with, um, you know, the medications for it. And, you know, some of the, the medications for it, the, the antibiotics, they kill other gut flora and the animal is just, it causes pain, um, because some of the, um, parasites are within the cell of the intestine. So it even causes more pain. Um, and then you have this prolonged thing and then they return, the parasites return. And it's not because they haven't fully cleaned out the enclosure. It's because 
these parasites, when they reproduce, they form cysts or they're encased in eggs and they can, they don't have to leave the body to reproduce. And so they're protected in that cyst. So, you know, it's something they naturally have. And if your animal is showing problems where it's got overgrowth, which are causing clinical signs, then it is due to a husbandry problem or some other stress problem. Um, we had... I've had clients who had poor husbandry. We fixed it all and they were going really well. Perfect. No more problems. Then re-presenting with overgrowth of pinworms and coccidia. Um, okay. Okay. What's happened? The husbandry, husbandry's was improved. Um, and then I further investigated it and those animals had liver tumors or some other thing, some other thing that was immunosuppressing them to cause that problem. So. Parasites is a secondary problem. It's saying that you've got something else wrong. 99% of the time, just like every other illness in captive reptiles, it's husbandry. Um, but there's always those cases. It's really anything that's causing immunosuppression. Sure, if there's an overgrowth and it's causing clinical signs, yeah, we treat it, but we fix the primary cause. That's the best way to do it, um, which is, you know, that's the best way to go about it. Um, typical times when I do see overgrowth, um, uh, male and female dragons coming up to breeding season, in breeding season, males in particular, um, and many of the, um, the morphs, um, get an overgrowth of, um, uh, flagellates, um, and somewhat coccidia. And that's just because you know, it's a stressful time, breeding time. Um, you know, they're not basking as much as they should because they're trying to display and do all these things. Um, and then females naturally, like every other animal species out there, their immune drops, a pregnant female, the immune system drops. And then that's the time when parasites will transfer to the next generation. If you look in dogs, it transfers to the placenta to the puppies. Um, but in bearded dragons, it increases in the females. You know, reptiles are fantastic animals. The reproductive tract, the urinary tract, and the, the um, gastrointestinal tract come up through the same hole. So coats the egg, coats the new young, if it's a live-bearing species, with cysts of these parasites. So, um, you know, so we see a lot of problems around breeding season. Um, you know, it's, but other than that, during a normal season, non-reproductive animals, generally they're pretty strong. And if they do have problems, it's due to husbandry. The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Bidivet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Bidivet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.